Welcome everybody to the world is a mess and I just want to steampunk it. This is episode 97, November 20th, 2023. I guess this will, this will be the Thanksgiving as episode because I can't imagine doing another one before Thanksgiving. Maybe we will. But uh, I'm your host, Steampunk Stories, and I'm here in North Hollywood, California. And I'm here with your co-host, Daniel Burdison, and he is in Bellwood, Ontario, Canada. How's it going, Daniel? Hi, I'm, I'm doing better, thanks. Doing better? Compared yeah, a to what? Bit. Compared to what? Oh, uh, you know, uh, no, usually I'm kind of sad and, and depressed, but now I'm a little better, I guess, yeah. Um, well, I mean, you have a lot to be fortunate for. You're not, uh, yeah, you're definitely. not living on, you're not living on the streets. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I got a little bit of a different setup this week because I changed out the end table for this steel mesh in table and it's lower so i had to point the webcam up so now it's facing up towards me but and i got my wireless keyboard right here mm -hmm. but yeah i guess the first order of business um i went and saw the marvels yesterday yeah did you like it nah it mostly sucked uh, I, I agree. Spoiler, I agree. Spoiler, I spoilers ahead for those of you who haven't seen it, but it's been out for like a week. So if you were going to see it, you probably would have already seen it by now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I um, on a scale of one to ten, I would give it a four. And the only thing that makes it a four is the post credit scene. That's why I said spoilers ahead. But the overall gist of the movie was that it had some pacing issues. There were times where I got bored watching it. Uh, I couldn't imagine watching it on B-Flex because I would have probably just paused it because I would have gotten bored. But it was really slow paced in the beginning and there wasn't a lot of explanation. It was really poor screenwriting. Like they're on the moon. They don't really explain why they don't have spacesuits. You would assume if they were on the moon, or it looks like the moon, uh, they should have spacesuits. Uh, that there's just no explanation, and the actress who played the villain, she just she had a hard time acting. She just had the same cheesy grin on her face. She had a kind of a the 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 actress who played the villain. She seemed very. I mean, the the character, the villain, seemed really weak. So when you have a movie with a weak villain, that really hurts the story. Uh, I hate the Flurkin. I, I the Flurkin is the most cutesy McGovern. That stupid uh, excuse to do cheap special effects because you can just have a bunch of kittens or a bunch of cats, and you consider them this exotic alien race called Flurkins, and um. You know, Miss Marvel, her character is annoying. And, you know, so all the cutesy cat stuff, the, the, you know, it seemed out of character for Miss Marvel that she would have a secret marriage. She was on that musical planet and she's married to the prince. I'm like, God, they're just making this into a Disney movie. This is like the Disney princesses, we need a musical scene. And you can see Disney's negative influence on the mcu in this movie because it's like well marvel miss Mar you know captain marvel was built up to be this strong independent woman at least in the first movie and then you find out well i had to compromise and marry this guy for treaty reasons in secret and it was stupid they had that whole stupid scene where the the only way people could communicate is by singing uh that was just dumb the flurkins were dumb you know that was just an excuse to be able to evacuate all the astronauts off the space station in a tiny space because they apparently every Florkin has storage in a uh, dimensional pocket in each cat. Uh, it was just dumb. It was just dumb. Um, and then there was some slow pacing scenes. The action scenes weren't really that great. 
the villains got defeated pretty easily. She basically blew herself up in the end. Um, the best part of it is the post credit scene. Um, you know, where they, they brought back Beast from the Marvel or from the uh, Fox Cinematic X-Men universe. And she apparently ripped um, a portal into another parallel reality or another parallel universe. And so that leads up. That's probably going to lead into the next MCU movie, which is going to be Deadpool 3. What, yeah, what's definitely. your response to my review on that? Oh, yeah, I heard that Deadpool 3 will be a, a sequel to yeah. Loki Season 2 and uh, the Marvels. Yeah, because it's going to, you're going to have the Time Variance Authority and they're basically going to recruit Deadpool, kind of like the way they recruited Loki, to help prune and investigate timelines. And apparently uh, Deadpool has to go kill the entire Fox Cinematic Universe but he befriends Wolverine and supposedly is going to, um, that's going to be how they eliminate the Fox cinematic universe, but they bring in the X-Men. So. Yeah. And now I'm hearing that they're, they're not going to recast the X-Men. They're just going to use the Fox X-Men. I'm like, Oh, I hope so. Please. I hope so. That would make sense. Cause they were mostly popular, except the last X-Men movie didn't do that well. Um, because they didn't do a really good job at Dark Phoenix Saga. Yeah. I uh, wouldn't want to see new people in those roles. I want to see something from someone, I want to see familiar people, right? Yeah, familiar people. I didn't like Jennifer Lawrence as Rogue. She did a terrible job. Uh, no, no, she was Mystique. Or Mystique, not Rogue. Sorry, Mystique. I'm sorry, I've been uh, tired and I haven't felt well the last few days. I've been kind of nauseous, so I don't know. I feel a little bit better today. But yeah, I misspoke. I meant Mystique. Um, but yeah, she did a terrible job as Mystique. And they, you know, tried to make Mystique a, a good guy. And that didn't quite work. But... see i mean i would say the dark phoenix zone the last one was kind of almost mediocre i would i would classify it as almost mediocre but it was definitely disappointing but what did you think of x-men dark phoenix uh yeah it was mediocre But uh, what's the actor, uh, Frazier? Uh, oh, Frazier? yeah, uh, Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey Grammer. Uh, Kelsey Grammer did a really good job uh, portraying Beast. And so I'm glad that they brought him back. Although I heard this time around, because he's getting older and more feeble, that he just basically did motion capture and provided the voice because uh, that was definitely CGI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I when you look at him, it's like it doesn't look like the beast from X Men Three. When you look at his face, it looks it looks fake and CGI ish. But I heard they had to do that because he didn't really, you know, he's he's doesn't have the stamina that he used to have. Because like the last time he was in an X Men movie was in two thousand eight, or no, no, that was two thousand six. Last stand. No, wait, 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 wait. Uh, it was it was 2014. He made a small cameo as Beast in that other timeline that that uh, Logan created at the end of X Men: Days of the Past. Oh, that's right. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, me too. One time, I thought to myself, the last time we saw him was in 2006. But then I'm thinking, wait a sec. No, he made a cameo appearance in in Days of Future Past. So, yeah, I like him as Beast. I think he's the better version of Beast than the other actor who played Beast. Nicholas Holt? Oh, my God, that guy's awful. But... And you know what? The sad thing is, Nicholas Holt is now our new Lex Luthor for Superman Legacy. This just in. I could, that could work. 
Oh God, I can't stand that actor. I don't like Nicholas why do why Holt. do you not like the actor? What's 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 wrong with the actor? I, I just I just don't like him. He's just first of all, he re, he replaced Kelsey Grammer in X Men. Okay. Uh in X Men um First Class. First class and Days of Future Past. And I know Kelsey Grammer couldn't play him in the sixties and seventies, right? But I just don't like the actor. He's annoying to me. You know, uh, fair enough, fair enough. But it's just like he's gonna be our new Lex Luthor. Oh, come on, there's I plenty of I didn't know about that. There's, yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, but yeah, I mean. Uh, and the interesting thing is with the Marvel's movie bombing, because it's only made as of this date, November 20th, it's only made 161 million worldwide. And in its is second that, weekend, that's it, what? That's bad. That's two weeks. Box office yeah. gross, 161 million. That's, that's bad because. They spent two hundred seventy four million on the production budget. I don't. I. I guess a lot of it went to actors' salaries and CGI. But uh, would, you, would you buy the DVD when it comes out? No. Not even. I, for I only buy DVDs of movies that I like. I have a lot of movies that I like. I have a lot of DVDs and Blu rays that I own. I don't want to own too many. I don't buy uh blu-rays or dvds for movies that i consider mediocre i have to at least like it or it has to be something interesting about it that i like that i find worthwhile to buy okay. and i would not with the marvels like i recently bought the blu-ray for guardians of the galaxy volume three because i love that movie i thought the movie was really well done uh and it, it also did well at the bo it's the only mcu movie of 2023 that did well because Ant Man of the Wasp Quantum Mania bombed, and now the Marvels have bombed. I mean, the Marvels fell seventy eight percent in the second week. Its first weekend made one hundred twenty one million uh, worldwide. Second weekend, it's only made like forty million worldwide. And you have the new um, uh, what's the number one movie this week? It's that uh, it's Office Mojo. What's this? The Marvels has a historic drop in two weeks? Oh. Yeah, it's doing terrible. It's bombed. There's no way it's going to come back from this. I mean, it's made $161 million in two weeks. Yeah. I mean, most of its money it made in the first week, which was $121 million, but that's worldwide gross. You know, I know exactly but... what they're going to say. The reason why it failed. Okay, Miss Marvel failed. Right, Miss Marvel tank. The Hunger the Games movie, The Ballad of Songs, Songbirds and Snakes. That's the number one movie. Uh, the Marvels has already fallen to um, fourth place because you have. I mean, last weekend the Marvels was the number one movie. Hold on, I'll uh, I'll share. I'll screen share. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Bear with me. Yeah, sure. Okay. I like your cookie trays in the back. Cookie trays. Yeah, yeah. I used to I used to my mom used to buy those types of cookies. I used to own those trays. No, those are, you know, I have like computer parts in those. Those are like little toolboxes. Oh my God, it's. Hold on, it won't bring up that window. Oh, I need to close Skype. You got too much bullshit. There we go. It was too many windows. I had too many windows open. 
All right. Can you see that? Yeah, the Hunger Games. Yeah, the, yeah, Ballad, the Hunger Games, the, the Ballad of Songs of Birds. But people said that movie is bombed as well because this was like another two hundred fifty million dollar budget movie that it needed to open with more than just forty four million. But it's the number one movie this week. Last week, Marvel's, as you can see, was number one, but it fell to fourth place. It got beat by The Hunger Games, The Ballad of uh, Songbirds and Snakes, Trolls Band Together, which is some kind of cartoon, and a horror movie called Thanksgiving. And the Marvels fell to number four. So that's that's pretty bad, considering that they spent $274 million on the budget. I think there's a UK tax break where they could, where they they did a fifty two million dollar write off, but even then, that's that's a net loss. I mean, they've spent two hundred twenty million on the movie. Now, I heard that they spent less than normal amount of money promoting it because because of the actor strike, the actors couldn't promote the film, which probably hurt the film. Um. But they still spent a lot of money on posters and commercials and advertising promoting it that way. And mm-hmm. even if you add like a hunt be if you you give a conservative estimate and say they spent only a hundred million promoting the movie, that's three hundred and twenty million just to break even. And the movie's only made half that and it's already fallen seventy eight percent. It's second weekend uh domestic gross was only 10 million dollars but i think worldwide gross was like 40 million so that's that's pretty bad that's pretty bad so you're gonna see less superhero movies coming out because like i think um warner brothers is not planning to release any new superhero movies next year because every movie they released this year uh you know has bombed and the there's only been one superhero movie this year that didn't bomb, and that was Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And you could really argue that that's more of a sci-fi movie than it is a superhero movie. But we'll see if Aquaman 2 does well. That's Warner Brothers' last hope to recoup some money because they've lost a lot of money on... Uh, Black Adam, Shazam 2, they lost a lot of money on The Flash, they lost a lot of money on Blue Beetle, so they've had bomb after bomb, and Marvel MCU is starting to be the same way, I mean, the Marvels is going to be probably the first Marvel movie to lose money, now, Ant-Man and the Wasp was not considered a success, because it only grossed um, $476 million, Quantumania did, four, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Quantum Mania grossed 476 million worldwide. Um, you could argue that maybe that movie broke even, but you know you don't spend hundreds of millions on a movie to just have it break even, and so that was considered a flop. Although it was, you could argue that it's more of a light flop compared to the Marvels or compared to Shazam Two or compared to um, Black Adam. Although Black Adam was released last year, but yeah. he just talked about movies released this year. But that's caused Kevin Feige, Kevin Feige and um, Disney to panic. And they've canceled the release of all their movies next year, except for Deadpool 3. Yeah. So if you look at the, the roster for what's coming up next year, as far as MCU movies, there's only one. And that is uh, Deadpool 3. Now, um, Madam Web is a totally separate Sony first movie, so that really has nothing to do with the MCU. That's a yeah. Sony, Sony is doing their own multiverse now because multiverse is a big thing, right? Yeah. What I'm hoping for is, okay, God forbid, when Secret Wars comes out, you know, have and, you Ma- and Madam Web looks terrible, by the way. What I know. Do you think? What I, do you think? I of think the, the Green Spider Man, the Green Evil Spider Man, is going around the multiverse killing Spider Man is pretty interesting. I was talking about. I know, but the trailer didn't inspire that out of me. I just I saw a bunch of women who are, guess Spider Women. That she doesn't even look nothing like Madam Web from the comic books. Let me bring up. Hold on. I'm gonna do another screen share first. Yeah, Madam Web is old, man. She's old. Well, her her 
she's like hooked up to in the comic book she's like hooked up to technology yeah she's able to see the future so she's very physically feeble and very elderly but she's got like a henchman that work for her and she's able to predict spider-man's moves ahead of time yeah uh, madam web is like three million years old hold on i don't know if you've seen Uh, Hold on a second. Yeah. My first introduction to Madam Web was in Spider Man the Animated Series. Yeah, she was stuck in a chair. Yeah, she's kind of like a cyborg, but she's like keyed in of technology. And you see that? Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, Spider Man. Issue. T- I wish I had that key issue. It's starting to become that. I heard that she was but, a bad guy. Well, hold hold on. Yeah, May- she was a, sp- a bad guy. She was a reoccurring villain in Spider Man, and she first appeared in Amazing Spider Man issue two ten from nineteen eighty. And she's kind of a D tier list uh, super villain, but as you can see, she's elderly. She in the comic book, she's blind and she's paralyzed. And her only superpower is she can see the future, like, but only like, I think a couple hours in advance. And that makes her very powerful because she's able to anticipate Spider Man's moves. And she usually has like an army of henchmen, I think, that work for her. And uh, I didn't read any of the, I, I need to read that comic, but I haven't read any of the uh, Madam Web comics. But, uh, but cool. yeah, the problem I have is the version of Madam Web is what is the uh what's her name? She was in Fifty Shades of Grey. Her name. I'm bad with names. But um She doesn't look any... Okay. Dakota Johnson, I think, plays Madam Web. She looks nothing like... Yeah, Dakota Johnson. I'm looking at the credits here on Internet Movie Database. Dakota Johnson plays Madam Web. Oops. I clicked on the wrong thing. I'll screen share. I'll make it more interesting. So Dakota Johnson plays Madam Web. I mean, I guess this is going to be like her origin story before she becomes disabled. But she looks nothing. She's young. She's attractive. And she looks nothing like the character that she's based on. And it, and they kind of portray her as like a superhero. Where she's using her ability to help the other spider women from the multiverse fight some villain that sort of looks like a dollar store spider-man so um it's nothing like the comic books and they're trying to make madam web into a hero and i just i don't really i'm gonna start stop screen share i don't really like that because they did the same thing with morbius and it just doesn't work when you take a well-established villain and you totally change them up and you turn them into an anti-hero or a superhero when they weren't intended to be that way. Um, the Venom movie was a little bit better because Venom in the comics started out a villain and then became more of a hero, anti-hero type character. The character evolved over time. But with Morbius, he's always been a villain. And the same thing with Madam Web, and they're turning her into a superhero and she's just some... She's just a uh, Dakota Johnson, the hot chick from. She's just a hot chick from Fifty Shades of Grey. So we're going to release this on Valentine's Day because maybe we'll get all the Fifty Shades of Grey fans to come see the movie. It's just really dumb, and I didn't really like the trailer. I was, it it felt like a low budget, you know, like uh, a lot of people described it as looking like a low budget CW show. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What did you think of the trailer? You don't have to agree with um, me. You could totally disagree with me, and I'm okay with that. Well, no, no, I, I thought it was, I mean, I didn't, 
like it. I didn't dislike it. I just thought it was okay, really. I mean, I mean, it's it's the Sony verse. I'm into the MCU. Well, I mean, I get um, what Sony's trying to do because Sony only owns the rights to the Spider Verse characters. They only own the rights to Spider Verse, Spider Man, and all the the like the Sinister Six and all the C and D tier list Spider Man villains. And you know, they Sony knows that if you do a superhero movie, sometimes they make a lot of money. Sometimes they bomb, but sometimes they make a lot of money. Or at least they had been up until twenty twenty three. And so they want to do superhero movies, but they don't really own the license to any superheroes. So I can almost imagine what it's like for those executives behind the scenes talking about, man, we need to do a superhero movie, but we only own Spider-Verse characters. Well, let's take these villains and recreate them as heroes. And, they, and they're doing the same thing with the, with the uh, um, Craven the Hunter. They got a trailer for that. That movie is also being released next year. Let's see, that looks stupid as well. Yeah, Craven the Hunter Hunters coming out in twenty twenty four. They've already released a trailer for it. It looks really dumb. You know, I guess it's going to be Craven versus the Rhino because Rhino makes a cameo appearance in the trailer. You see, like his hand changing gray, and so that's just going to be dumb and again they're take they're making the same mistake they're trying to take a character like craven which is one of spider-man's i guess i guess that's one of his rogue gallery one of spider-man's rogue gallery one of his more a-tier villains like morbius and dr octopus and green goblin the problem is is craven is more interesting as a villain when you try to take a character from the comics that's a well-established villain and you turn them into try to turn them into a superhero, it just doesn't work. They did the same thing with Morbius. Uh, now, Venom is a little different. The first Venom movie was pretty entertaining because you know he is kind of an anti hero in the comics, he's sometimes a villain, sometimes he's an anti hero. But, um, you know, it didn't work with Morbius, and that's why that movie bombed. And it did, and it's I don't think it's going to work with Craven the Hunter and Madam Web. So, this pretty lame lineup. Of Marvel movies next year, you got Craven the Hunter, Madam Web, uh, with the exception of Deadpool three. That looks like it will be amazing. Yeah, definitely. But so, anything and else like in the like, news you want to talk about? Like, okay, like um, at the end of Deadpool three, it's rumored that um, Wolverine and Deadpool are going to end up eating pizza. They're going to be in a pizza place, and. There, it, and then the camera pans up. We see it's Tobey Maguire, Spider Man. So they're going to be in the Tobey Maguire Spider Man universe, eating pizza. You know, Wolverine and Deadpool. Well, that'll be cool if they have that Easter egg in there. I'm, I'm all for that. Yeah, because we haven't seen we haven't seen the Tobey Maguire Spider Man universe since 2007. So it would be nice to see it again. Yeah, Even if it's for like a quick bit. So, what's next? Do you want to talk about news of the? Uh, yeah, Ukraine war. We could talk about the Ukraine war. We could also talk about. Oh, uh, we got ten minutes time, so we got to make it quick. I just got the ten minutes notice. Yeah, me too. But. Yeah, I like that it at least gives you a timer, so now I know where to pace myself. We'll talk about Israel-Palestine, and then we can go on and talk about Ukraine. But let me share screen. I really like this website, Live UA Map. A lot of it is based on sourced information from news reports. And a lot of it is based on self-reporting. Now, you don't get a 100% accurate view of what's going on in the Middle East. Like, there's crazy stuff like owner of the ship, a galaxy leader, the ship is currently detained. Oh, yeah, apparently uh, 
the Houthi government of southern Yemen, I think, detained in an Israeli ship. No, yeah? Or there's something related to uh, Yemen's Minister of Information. The Houthis hijacking of the ship Galaxy Leader is a terrorist act. And then you have owner of the ship held by the Houthis armed men carried out an illegal landing from a helicopter on the deck of the ship. Yeah, there was an Israeli ship detained by southern Yemen. Because southern Yemen has declared war on Israel, but they're they're based like around here. But you look here in the Middle East, there's still a lot of bombing going on. You have, I don't know if you can see the purple areas. The yeah. purple areas are the areas occupied by the Israeli army. Let's see. More images of Hamas weaponry and tunnels found by Israeli troops inside a mosque in Gaza City's uh, Zeton neighborhood. I think I'm, I'm, forgive me if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. 36 division troops also detected or directed several airstrikes against Hamas operatives as well as located a rocket uh, making lab explosives, explosive device, and a drone. Okay. And apparently there's still some fighting going on here. al Qaeda's brigades uh, we were able to cause six soldiers to be killed or wounded during clashes. So there's still some fighting going on in the vicinity of Gaza City uh, with over 11,000 civilians and, and the Israeli Air Force continues to bomb relentlessly in the north and the south. Apparently, Israeli troops captured the palace, Justice Palace in Gaza, and then they've been bombing in the south and in Egypt. Egyptian Minister of Health, we continue to receive wounded, injured, and sick Palestinians to provide medical care. And it says, number of deaths and injuries among children in Gaza are terrifying. But yeah, it's been estimated that over 5,000 children as of November the 20th, this war has been going on over a month, have been killed. And then Israelis have been shooting at people and uh, targeting hospitals and targeting mosques and, you know, and just blowing up the roads and civilians trying to evacuate. And uh, it's definitely an ethnic cleansing campaign. But like I said, there are bad actors on both sides. I mean, Hamas are terrorists. They killed a bunch of innocent civilians. But there's been Israeli illegal occupation of Palestinian territory since 1948. So this is just an escalation and, you know, circular violence that continues to go on since 1948. So with no end in sight. It's kind of depressing. Let's see. The Gaza war hinders Israel gas exports to Egypt and Jordan. Anyway, so we only got about five minutes left. So do you want to switch to talking about you? Uh, before I switch to talking about Ukraine, do you want to talk any more about the Israeli Hamas conflict? They've got basically Gaza City mostly occupied, mostly surrounded. And the war is still ongoing and the bombing continues. And the civilian yeah. death toll is up to 11,000, including about 5,000 children. So That's any rough. last comments before I talk about Ukraine? Oh, uh, We're running out of time, man. We got no, no, nothing, minutes. nothing. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. And you need to be fast on your feet, man. Yeah. Like I said, we get, we're running out of time. All right. Yeah, no so, no nah, last comments on that. that. No. Nah. I mean, you can also see that Israel's been fighting skirmishes on the border of Lebanon as well with Hezbollah. And then the United States has got a carrier group out in the Mediterranean. But anyway, so if you have no last words, I'm going to go on many, and talk about Ukraine. How many people do you think are dying in this war every every second? I don't know. 
I right, know. You know. Impossible to calculate or predict that. So, but we're running out of time. We got less than three minutes. Let me give a brief update on Ukraine. Uh, oh, yeah. We, yeah, we have two major wars on two fronts, Ukraine and Israel. Well, I mean, we're technically the United States is fighting and its Western allies, which include like Canada, are fighting a proxy war of Russia. I mean, there are you know, European Union countries. Uh, Canada, United States are um, arming and equipping and training Ukrainian soldiers. And so we're fighting a proxy war of Russia. And then we're providing um, weapons to Israel and equipping them and using Israel as a proxy in the Middle East. So it's two proxy wars. But as you can see, the front line really hasn't changed that much. Um, Russia continues to fight skirmish lines along the Dnieper River. Now, there's some reports here just south of Kirsten that Ukrainian forces have created a bridgehead because the red is where Russia occupies. And then the, the white area and the gray areas are what the Ukrainian military occupies. And the blue is, of course, border. But, yeah, there's really, you know, considering that Ukraine launched a counteroffensive like back in June and they've only taken this small amount of territory, it's pretty much a stalemate at this point. And there's been heavy bombing. Russia continues to have air superiority. They don't have absolute air superiority, but they, they have air, I shall say, more like air dominance. They have air dominance because Ukraine doesn't have much of an air force or a navy. Um, if you look here at Bakhmut, Russia still occupies Bakhmut, and they still occupy Solidar. Russia took these two towns earlier this year, about six months ago. And then down here, there's been really heavy fighting. Uh, Af uh, Adifka, Adifka, there's been really heavy fighting. The Russian Air Force is bombing. And you got heavy skirmishes right here. Ukrainian military had 54 combat engagements with Russian forces. That's a lot. This is just within the last 24 hours. So there's heavy fighting. Russia's trying to take Adifka. And they're launching a pincer movement. You can see here Russian forces are cutting off this road. And they're launching two pincer movements. And they're trying to encircle Ukrainian forces around Adifka. So that's the main development as far as the front line is Russian forces. You can see they're in the red, what they control on the map. They're doing pincer. Okay, we've got less than a minute. But anyway, still stalemate, still no end in sight. Thank you very much for joining us. This has been The World is a Mess, and I just want to Steampunk it, episode 97, November 20th, 2023. I'm your host, Steampunk Star Raisin, and you're here with co-hosts Daniel Burdison in Bellwood, Ontario, Canada. You have a nice day, and I will see you 25 billion years. Bye.